I think everyone should definitely try hurling. That's a hundred percent. You know, I, I'd even make arguments that it's probably the number one off-season training that hockey players can do because you're just, you know, working on your running and the speed aspects that can translate really well. Hey everyone, I'm Dave from PlayHurling.com and today I'm joined by Era Oak, Ottawa's Nicholas Redmond. Nick is one of the first overseas hurlers to compete in the Fitzgibbon Cup. He started his hurling career in 2017 in Ottawa, Canada and is now at IT Carlo. His manager is the legendary DJ Carey. Nick, how's it going? Going well, thanks for having me. Yeah, well, thanks for being on. Let's start from the beginning. How did you first hear about Harden? Uh, I actually first learned of hurling around 2017 with a Irish teacher that came over to teach in one of, the, in one of my schools. And uh, she put the idea in my head, but I was very focused on ice hockey then. So I didn't try it till about uh, 2018, which is when I would have, uh, a year later, when I would have really started playing. Cool. Was that actually at Concordia? Because I know there's an Irish program there. Uh, no, no. Uh, no. I was at... University of Ottawa at the time. But what were your first impressions of the sport when you tried Harden? Uh, man, I just, I just liked uh, the, like the speed and the physicality. It was, there was big similarities with ice hockey. So uh, it just felt familiar for me. And, uh, you know, just having a stick in my hand. So, yeah, that's that's what I really enjoy about it off the bat. And then, you know, just the, being part of the club like uh, and the, the openness of the, the Irish and everything like that, it, it all, all of it together and now, I'm stuck in, as they say. So, And you mentioned that you were originally an ice hockey player uh, for the Tampa Bay Juniors. Uh, did you find there was much crossover, like playing at that high level with learning how to play Harden? Yeah, I mean, obviously the hand-eye, the coordination, but I'd say to, you know, hockey is, is fairly fast in its own right. The thought process of, of uh, you know, seeing the plays and making the plays at, uh, at speed uh, would definitely have uh, transitioned quite well and helped me uh, quite well with hurling and then just, you know, not being too afraid to get my, my nose and the physicality of things. So, uh, which is a big part of both sports. Yeah, they're, they're similar. And like they, the hockey has like the, the origins of hurling, like back when the Irish first arrived in Canada. So it, it's probably similar playing both. I've never played ice hockey. So I'm sure just like a, a, a clear cross uh, of both sports. Yeah, well, the way hockey's going nowadays, it's starting to look like look a lot like curling with all the the puck tricks that the guys do. So, uh, but yeah, no, there's a lot of similarities there. Yeah, it definitely would have helped, especially I'd say, especially where I'm at now uh, with fits and all that, with the the speed training and stuff that we would have done off the ice as well. So, it definitely, it definitely helped. Oh, what would you say to other uh, ice hockey players that might be watching this if they're interested in trying hard? And what what would be a couple tips you would give for your advice on whether they should try hurling or not? Oh, I, I think everyone should definitely try hurling. That's a hundred percent. You know, I would, I'd even make arguments that it's probably the number one off season training that hockey players can do. Cause you're just, you know, working on your running and the speed aspects that can translate really well. And then you, you keep in the hand eye and like the touch going, which is very similar to, you know, the touch in hockey, you're having soft hands as well. You know, my advice would be, you know, you know, be patient, I, especially I, I find with people who are athletes in other sports before, it, you know, you're not going to be uh, hitting 40 yard uh, scores off the bat, especially not on the run. So uh, just be patient with it. Take your time like any new sport. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, you know, it's a tremendous sport, fastest sport on grass, that's for sure. And, and just have fun with it. But definitely, definitely do try it. You know, what? you'll you'll probably all end up liking it. That's that's my thought. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually agree with that. I'm sure like you've, if you've had a chance to play hockey since being there, um, have you found there was much that you learned from her and that you took back to hockey? Yeah, there's definitely a few things that I, I'd like to think I bring back when I play around with some friends and, and whatnot, but it's probably more just the, you know, the, the, the skills and the, the tricks of, uh, of hurling into ice hockey, which we're, we're starting to see anyways. So pivoting to the, uh, the 2019 JA World Games, you represent the Canada uh, can you describe how that felt uh, to represent your country playing Harden? Growing up playing ice hockey, I would have had dreams of, of representing my country, but I think it's it's an honor for anyone anytime you get to represent your country in, in anything. And, you know, at the end of the day, it gives the younger kids uh, somewhere to look and they can see that there's, you know, somewhere to reach and somewhere to go. It was just a great experience. I thought it was, it was really well put on there, the 2019 uh, Renault World Games. So we uh, actually, well, my first Fitzgibbon match would have been against Waterford. So it was kind of came full circle for myself when, uh, when uh, yeah, when we went down and played there. So it was, uh, it was very cool. It was very cool. Yeah, everything <laughs> looked very familiar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Too yeah. 
And when you played your first match, uh, what's the most memorable moment from that day? Yeah, I, I would have said the first time I would have stepped on the field with IT Carl would have been a, in a challenge match. And uh, there wasn't too many fans, but just enough to make the experience memorable. And my uh, one of the head coaches, uh, Mick, Michael Dempsey, who's also another big name himself there in, in the sport of, uh, of hurling, he would have, as I'm getting subbed on, he would have turned around to the crowd and and explain my whole story, you know, that I'm Canadian, I'm here playing hurling and stuff. And would have, you know, I don't think anyone's cheered or had to cheer as loud for, you know, basically just a, an injury sub in the last half. So uh, it was definitely a memory that I'll, I'll, I'll never forget. So I was nice of them to make my, uh, my first, uh, first game one to remember with the, the nice little standing ovation. So that was uh, oh. a good memory. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well, you are you are the first one, so it's it's an unusual thing to hear that there's a Canadian on the fields in in an Irish uh, college match. So, well, you know, I guess it takes one, but I'm sure there'll be there'll be many after me. I can confidently say it'll probably be better and have a bigger impact. But you know, it takes someone to be first, and I guess that was me. So uh, happy to be it. I guess happy to be the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're opening the doors. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So your manager is Harden legend DJ Carey. What's the best words of advice DJ has given you? Legend, you got that right. He, you know, he's, he's obviously I would have, like my first interactions with hurling, I would have watched all his YouTube videos and tutorials and everything. And then our club, as you kind of maybe see with the colors, we have a lot of connections to Kilkenny as well. And when I first uh, went on in the first match right before the big standing ovation and stuff he would have told me you know just to just to have fun and and enjoy it and uh, that's kind of what he'd been repeating to me the whole time because myself I'm you know in my head a lot and pretty pretty hard on myself and I think he recognizes that so he just tells me to relax have fun you know there's no pressure you know at the end of the day that's what you're there for just to have fun so that's that's would have been some words of advice yeah and has he given you any unique Harden tips yeah, for sure. I'm just his philosophy in training uh, is, you know, not just, you know, practice makes perfect, but like more along the philosophy of perfect practice, you know, makes perfect games and stuff like that. I mean, I remember one memory that's sticking out to me right now is we were training, we we're doing uh, just a kind of hand pass drill to start off. And I mean, DJ is kind of known for his, his uh, hand passes going further than some people can pluck the ball. And he's telling us, you know, just focus in, no cheating. Don't just kind of throw it and give a little love tap really, you know, keep your eye on the ball, give it a good tap. And, and, you know, he gave an example using one of the, one of the lads there and, you know, the lad hardly got it, came so fast at him, you know, the, the old uh, wall ball hands there, handball, they, <laughs> they still, they still got it. If not on a more personal level, I'm not ashamed to say that technically compared to the guys I'm, I'm playing with now, when I first came in, I was definitely thrown on the deep end. The technique was maybe not where it, it could be, or it is now. Um, and uh, he would have told me, you know, just big thing for myself. We all want to be riskier hurlers. And he would have said, you know, throw the elbows up a bit more, a bit higher on the long strike or, you know, just be a cognizant of where the elbows are, because ultimately you got to get through the elbows before you get to the wrist and stuff. So that would be my big thing. And then just to focus in on the ball a lot more, um, I would have had the tendency to try and see where it's going before it's actually gone. So those are the two big tips that he would have given me. But if not, just enjoy it and keep working at it. And uh, just to compare myself to who I was yesterday and not to the teammates, because if I were to do that, my ego would have been gone pretty, pretty early. Isn't it better to be like feeling in a deep end so you actually get more, you get better as a player? So that is, that is, yeah. that is good advice. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I definitely. I mean, it's it's definitely helped me uh, learn quickly and probably quicker than I would have if I would have eased my way into it. So I'm thankful for that. But definitely at first it was it was definitely tough, but everybody was just so supportive and nice. Just a lot of time just, you know, with the wall over throughout the summers back in Canada. And then over here, just at least now, if you don't have a wall, you can always find someone around who's willing to go for pucks. So it was, uh, it was beautiful. It's, it's, it's honestly the, the culture of it here is is, uh, is what I came for and I'm, I'm getting tons of it. So that's awesome. Uh, what's the next big thing you see for yourself when it comes to Harden? Uh, uh, the next big thing for me, I mean, I, luckily I still got a few more years here at uh, IT Carlo. They've done so much for me. I definitely feel like, oh, it's them to at least try and help out in any way I can to try and get a fit. You know, we're, we're doing all right this year, you know, touch wood, you know, and if, if we do this year, then, you know, let's try again uh, every year that I'm here. So I still got a few years. So that's the most immediate goal. But if not, in the end, it's, 
you know, I want to be ready and, you know, be a big, uh, big help to the team Canada at the next world games, whenever they'll be. And then, uh, ultimately a little bit later down the line, just, you know, kind of help Camogie and hurling grow in Canada and, you know, everywhere else outside of Ireland. Cause it's, it's definitely, it's definitely picking up. That's for sure. It's gaining a lot of traction outside of the, outside it of Ireland. Is. Yeah, because yeah. even if you look at like not just North America, if you look at Europe, if you look at Australia, like it is it is growing and faster than I think previously. Yeah, no, for sure. It was kind of Ireland's best kept secret for a while, I'd say. I'd say, yeah, those World Games, the 2019 ones were quite huge. And I think every country, uh, respectively, has gone back and, and just been running with it, you know. So I've even seen it in America. It's, it's the same thing. That it's just there's new clubs popping up and Canada is the same thing. Yeah, yeah. for sure exciting it's an exciting time and uh i'm just hoping to be a part of it well thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your story it's hopefully it convinces other hockey players to give Harden a go thanks for having me it's my pleasure and exactly i hope uh i can be somewhat of inspiration to the next people at least come out and try it is there anywhere uh for people watching this to find you on social media my club is arrow Garo hurling but uh i mean personally i guess i've uh, undertaken the the username of hurling canuck which seems to fit quite well now cool it's very fitting <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was great thank you <laughs> yeah awesome yeah thanks for having me like i would have known to play hurling when i would have first started and it's in my mind it's the biggest uh social media or outlet outside of Ireland, like promoting the game. So I would have been quite aware of you and what you've done and seen the tutorials you put up as well. So. Oh, good. I, I wasn't sure. That's great. Like that, that's why I created them. Honestly, this is the world's best kept secret. And so the more we get the new generation to share it on social media, I'm sure we'll just get bigger and better. So like I said, I'm, I'm the first, but I'm, I know there'll be more and they'll just be better. So. Well, thanks again. And best of luck at IT Carlo. Thank you. Thank you so much.